Hey guys, it's me, Stuffy Nose. Currently in the process of moving, been a little busy lately, that's why I'm currently reporting to you from the ground. Yeah, I don't have a kitchen table anymore. Life has been rough. I've been kind of busy lately, I've been moving, I got sick, and now, since I can't go to work because I'm sick, I was like, ooh, time to make Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube video? This episode, we're gonna be looking at the, uh, the sealed tournament that happened a couple weeks ago and see how that went. It was a lot of fun. But first, I want to announce the giveaway winner from the last video. So this video, we have to give away. This guy right here is the winner. So if you won, please email me and uh, I'll get you your prize. Get in contact with me so we can get you your prize. This week's giveaway, you'll have to find out. I'll announce it later on in the video. Without further ado, let's go get started. Hey guys, it's me Cam, and today is the Dimension Force pre-release event, sneak peek preview. We are doing a sealed pack tourney. So if you guys don't know what a sealed pack tourney, every three months or so, Konami does this event where you can buy five packs, and then everyone takes the packs and makes like a tiny little deck out of it, and then just using the shitty commons that you get, and then everyone competes with their shitty deck. It's really great for people that don't uh, have decks or don't really know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! or just kind of want to play for fun. Should be a good turnout today. Uh, looking forward to some funny matches. Super excited to get started. There were a decent number of people that showed up along with a couple buddies of mine that don't really play Yu-Gi-Oh! but I invited to come play. Uh, the best part about sealed tournaments is that it evens the playing field and everyone has a chance to pull some insane cards to use in the tourney. Unfortunately for me, I was not one of those people. <laughs> my, my foils are not great. Uh, the best card that I pulled was an ultra rare skeletal dragon felgrand and I couldn't even use it because I didn't pull a single zombie tuner monster. The next foil card I ended up pulling was the weather forecast which, which is kind of useless because there aren't any weather painter cards in the set so I couldn't even use it. Then I pulled two chow side the ghost stopper. <laughs> They don't really synergize with anything, and the effect is so niche that I probably won't even end up resolving it in this whole tournament. And lastly, the final foil that I pulled was Zombie Reborn, which is a great card. You know, if I had any, like, you know, zombie monsters. I was really hoping for some zombie monsters because the archetype is really strong in this format, but I didn't pull a single one. Uh, I just ended up pulling with a bunch of warrior stuff, and uh, I ended up going with, a, like, a warrior beatdown type deck with a few other surprises thrown in there. Alright, I got the buy. First time on the vlog. I like to see how everyone else is doing. We get to walk around and see other people play. We got uh, Rob versus Matt. Matt, you just drew five cards. How do you feel? Uh, terrible. This is really, really bad. <laughs> Did you just summon a monster? Yes. Uh, I feel pretty good. Nice. Yeah, nice. I've got a monster on the board. That was a good, good summon. Yeah. Very good job. Nice. <laughs> Adam set a card. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling the same. I haven't lost yet, so hey, that's a plus in my book. It's a tense game. It's an intense game we got. Okay, here we go. Tommy, what did you do to this man? Uh, I summoned a bull at him. What? Oh my god. I, I, I hit, uh, I had a tribute stone monster, and I hit into hit it a sarcophagus instead of the other side. Oh no. <laughs> we got Ricky over here. He just got reverse jarred <laughs> dude he's got the karibo play mat from target about to play my first game versus this man this this man with the flowers we're about to get started with this goofy the goofiest deck the goofiest game of Yu-Gi-Oh we've ever played all right so we get paired up against frank in the i mean uh, second round and he's currently using his Eternity Code mouse pad as his playmat. In the first turn, he sets two cards face down, passes over to me. In my turn, I summon out Chow Sai, which Frank then activates backup team. So this card allows him to draw cards up to the number of cards that I control, and then place the same number of cards drawn to the bottom of the deck in any order. And then he gets to reset the card during the end phase. I attack his face down card, which is a reverse jar, so that gets destroyed and its effect sets my Chow Sai face down to defense position. Next turn, Frank sends a couple more cards and passes. In my turn, I draw the funny octopus and I summon out my second Chow Sai and attack his face down, which is a Scareclaw Acroa with 2000 defense. And I'm just like, dang man, I don't, I don't got anything here. I gotta pass my turn, I guess. Uh, but before I do, Frank activates another backup team to draw more cards, and then next turn he activates Ichiroku's Ledger Book, which targets and banishes two monsters I control until the end of the turn. In exchange, I gain 2,000 life points. He then tributes summons into Ancient Warrior Don Ying and attacks me for 2,200. Uh, and then not sure what to do at this point, but I remember I do have a special Synchro Monster I can special summon. 
That's right, the sentient what musical the instruments. Fuck? I didn't pull the guitar nor the keyboard in my packs, so I have to do some gymnastics in order to get this card on the field. I set my Light Law medium face down in hopes that Frank doesn't attack it, so I can use it as a material for a Synchro Summon next turn. Next turn, Frank attacks with Don Yang, and I stop the attack by activating my Ledger Book to save my monster from being destroyed. My turn comes around again, and now I'm able to perform a Synchro Summon, baby. I take out my funny octopus, the one singular tuner in my whole deck, and synchro summon using the octopus, Lailong Medium, and Chao Side to form Symphonic Warrior Rocks, baby, the strongest card of my deck. And I use it to attack Get and destroy the, the Don Yang. So now I got the upper hand, and this is literally just like the best card of my deck. So if Frank is able to get around this somehow, then he pretty much just. Ah! Uh oh. Frank has Therions in his deck. Therions are good. They can special summon out pretty easily, and they have high attack, and they can just like send cards back to the hand or destroy them. So after he gets rid of my uh, Synchro Monster, I pretty much have nothing left, and then he's just able to just kind of whittle me down from there. So we unfortunately lose that first game. Alright guys, we're not giving up just yet. We're going into game two. We summon out the Colonel, and he brings out the two level four lower warrior monsters, uh, which I then use to overlay into... Garn Kepper, but it doesn't even matter unfortunately because Frank just pendulum summons his whole hand and then he he kills me. He kills me brutally and remorselessly. Uh and then I lose and die. So uh we unfortunately take a loss here and we'll move on to the next round. Hey, it's me, a healthier future version of Cam. Uh, in my new apartment now. I'm here to announce the giveaway. In this giveaway, I'm giving away a secret rare collector tin uh, total defense shogun. And all you have to do in order to enter is like the video, uh, be a subscriber to the channel, and uh, leave a comment telling me uh, if you've ever played in a sealed tournament, what you think about sealed tournaments, if they're fun or not. Uh, if you want me to do more sealed tournament uh, videos in the future. And. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'll get back to the video now. Bye. Round two has begun, and we are facing off against a man whose name I forgot, unfortunately. So sorry if you're watching this, but he does have a YouTube channel if anyone wants to check it out. We go first and end up drawing five monster cards. So I guess I start things off by placing Predaplant Biblips in defense position and passing it over to my opponent. My opponent draws and summons Light Law Medium in attack mode and ends his turn. And two can play that game. I summon out my Lot Love Medium from my hand and end my turn. My opponent summons out the Sarcophagus and attacks uh, with the Sarcophagus over Lot Love Medium. I activate its effect to negate the attack. Then he attacks, clashing both of our mediums together, uh, destroying them both. In my turn, I summon out the Battle Guard and try to destroy the Sarcophagus because when the Sarcophagus gets destroyed, it steals the monster that destroyed it, and I wanted to give it like the weakest monster possible. Oh, hell no, man. What the but before I'm able to do that, my opponent activates Algul Mazura from hand and special summon itself to save a sarcophagus from dying. And that's when I know I've lost. I can't like come on guys, you, you really expected me to beat the Chad zombie? Like come on. He's, and also he's got Therions, man. No, I I don't have anything against this, unfortunately. I'm just gonna get two out again, and that's exactly what happens. So uh like just like that, I mean I I've lost all chances of placing, unfortunately, in this tournament. But we do go up against Rob in the next round. All right, facing Rob. <laughs> All right. The games that we play were a little slow paced, but we end up going to game three, and I end up pulling off this kind of cool thing where I tribute summon three monsters and summon out my big dragon in order to attack for a game. I tribute summon three of my monsters. Oh, the dragon guy? Yeah. <laughs> Divine Dragon, whatever. <laughs> Titano Mach Mach Machia. Wow. I will go battle phase. Dead. GG, Cam. GG, Rob. So we ended up finishing 2 2, and let's see who ended up winning the whole tournament. Cameron won. Dude, no way. I won. That's crazy. Wow. Oh my god. I'm just gonna take the clip of you saying I won, and then just put that in the put that in the video, to say I won. <laughs> Clickbait. Cameron wins. First place. First place. Dimension Four sneak peek deck profile. Second cut of Cameron wins. All right, you guys, we got the sick deck profile from James, who got first place. His deck was the least shitty out of everyone else's. Hey and man, just like I said in your regional <laughs> thing, perfect deck, perfect player. Honestly, Dude. probably the best card of this entire, like, one of the best cards of this entire draft. Al Ghul Mazera, just straight up, if you have one of these on board and one of these in hand or grave, 
Anytime, like say this guy gets destroyed, you just loop and keep swapping. Unless they have two ways of getting rid of your guys by, destru uh, by destruction, which would have to be the trap card that gets rid of the spell trap monster. Uh, they can't really get rid of this, and this is one of the biggest bodies in the game. But of course, in order to make that card work, you do have to actually play zombies. I actually had really bad zombies pulls, but I pulled three playable ones. So this guy is basically sn two snatch steals. Anytime they kill your guy, you just get to take it, make it a zombie, and if they try and punch over it, you can Mazera protect it from whatever they stole, and if they destroy your monster, you get to do this guy again. So he's two snatch steals, as well as you just get a giant body that protects your zombies. Uh, Summon Sentinel literally is just a vanilla. It's basically Summon Skull. Uh, I was able to Pendulum Summon it and keep looping it. Trianthus, it's a high scale. I wish I had more of these guys. It's the two Symphonic Warriors. Uh, scale zero, scale eight. This guy allows me to Pendulum Summon, but I also get to just keep on recycling these guys and keeping the hand advantage. So in case they have some way to really deal with my scales, uh, I can bounce them back to hand and I can fix my scales for uh, probably one of the better cards in this draft, provided your pools didn't suck. <laughs> Pendulum scale. I wish I had more of these, and I wish I had more of these. If I could literally just play 3-3-3 three, 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 and like some other cards, I honestly would have. Because say you have two eights, you get to just pop two back row on your opponent's board, can mess up other Pendulum strategies. Uh, but also if you just have an eight and a zero, you get to bounce them back to the hand, you just get a free summon Triantis, as well as just getting your cards off the board. A card that nobody had any respect for, and I heard a lot of people talking trash about, was Vivid Trail. You get to use this card's effect three times. So target any card you control, bounce it back to the hand, and then while it's in the grave, you can only use one of the effects per turn, but while it's in the grave, you get to do the same effect, return a face-up card uh, on your side of the field back to the hand, and then reset it, and then next turn you get to do the first effect where you just bounce another card back to your hand. So pretty much with Pendulum Scale and the Vivid Trails, it was really hard to remove any cards on my board because I'll constantly just keep bouncing them back or protecting them. Ichiroku's Ledger Book was just really good for keeping you from dying. Uh, that's the only purpose it served. It would set up game pushes, because honestly, 2,000 life points doesn't matter too much. It's more so about keeping myself from dying or getting rid of a problem card so that way I can make a big push. This card was also insane. It basically was just free removal on any card. There was not too many cards that protected themselves. So uh, you attach to it during the end phase. You can pop it, summon a token with the same stats, and then re-equip the equip card. So you pair the equip card with Vivid Tail, and you just keep looping the Parasomnia popping their monsters and then getting more tokens so you're literally beating them down with Vivid their own trail cards. broken it's Vivid pretty trail broken. broken he it's felt the wrath broken. he was able to feel it and then i did play a small therians package i had a regulus but i sold it to frank let's he go just let me play the regulus for the plants. he let me <laughs> play it for the rest of the journey which is fine um i only pulled a foom a charge and a regulus uh, so it was just a really, it was just a really oh, small oh, engine, oh. but I was able to just, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. with Foom and Regulus, you were actually able to just recycle the Regulus or the Foom, bouncing it back to hand, sending the guys to grave, and then just recurring your resources. So because of Vivid Trail, I was constantly able to recycle my protection, recycle my removal, and recycle my big bodies. I actually had a lot of planning, theory crafting, and synergy put into this build. Nice. Well, it seems like you put a lot of thought into this, and it paid off. It just goes to show good deck building and good strategy. It gets you very far. It gets you very far. All right. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. Uh, thanks for the meme <laughs> interview, bro. Thanks for the funny deck profile. <laughs> hey, man. You love to see it. Yeah. That's the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed and had a good time watching. Apologies that this video took a little longer than expected to come out. I've just been super busy with moving and getting sick and everything and a bunch of other stuff. But I'm a bit more settled in now, and I'm excited to say that I have a lot of neat stuff coming out, uh, a lot of cool video ideas that I'm willing to share with you guys. So if you guys are interested in seeing more of my content, feel free to hit the subscribe button so you can know straight away when new content comes out. Uh, leave a like and a comment if you want to enter in the giveaway. Hope everyone's having a good weekend so far. Uh, can't wait to uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.